It's the beginning of another weekend. Welcome to the show. I am Moriah Afolabi Brennan. As always, I have the ladies with me. Before we invite the ladies, I'd like to acknowledge the birthday of somebody very special to all of us because uh, Mr. Tijana is somebody that has been, has been a close friend of the house. His mom is 80 years today. Oh. Uh, that is Alaja Feishike Titilayo Chifau Tijani on her 80th birthday tomorrow, actually, uh, February 5th. Happy mm. birthday to Alaja. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tomorrow. May God blessing. give her a long life and more health. Yes. Mm. How are you doing, Mariam? I'm fine. I'm doing great. Uh, and um, this morning, you know, there's something about book sales. It comes one, <laughs> two, three, yes. you know. And I, the reviews are just, uh, just really heartwarming for me. And I just want to thank you. I just feel like I, it's always like I need to send individual messages yeah, to these people. And a lot of people are saying... They feel so proud, especially those in diaspora. Like, oh, they feel so proud that this is coming from here, yeah. you know. And yeah. I want to say thank you to all of you too. Fantastic. Keep well buying. Done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> How are you doing, Elijah? I'm fine. I'm grateful to God. Um, I was working yesterday when I got a scare call from a loved family member who had a little health scare. But we're grateful to God. Things are stable this morning, and so all of us can go back to our businesses thank as God. usual. We thank God for Health life. Health scares are always very scary, mm. trust me. This person is available for everybody mm. in the family. You know when that they call and say, that person, hey, hey. Everybody see, stands still. Tiki tikata kata straight to first <laughs> yesterday. But I was tired, dead tired when I got home yesterday. But I'm grateful that, you know, Let's we're see. all um, stable in the morning. Good thank to God. see you. Hello. Hi. Obia Jilu. Hey. Huh. Importer, exporter. Pure water. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm great, yeah. So um, we've uh, started uh, a new book for the month of February in ah. our book club. Yes, we're reading uh, Good to Great uh, by Jim Collins. Yeah, I read I'm that. focusing I on ago. leadership this year. So we're taking a lot of books uh, on leadership and um, I'm handling the book review today. So I've actually raised warriors. They've ah. been holding down the forts, doing the book reviews, when I'm, whether I'm there or not. No. But uh, I'm starting this month, I'm handling the book review and I'm excited because um, I'm happy that people are beginning to read and a lot of them are able to start businesses, they are doing things, they are excited about gaining knowledge, you know. Mm. And I'm just excited myself good. on their behalf. Oh, well yesterday, yesterday we hung out at High Point. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it was nice hanging out. It was a nice place. Well yeah. done, too. Because yeah. they also a, a friend of... Beautiful place. Beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful place. They're also a friend of the house. So, mm. uh, uh, they, and they, they've always supported the show. So we went there to support the opening of their new event, High Point. Very well nice. Done. Well done, too. Yeah. I did the... Okay, lots of things happening in Nigeria. But first, let's go on a break. When we come back... We go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we'll start with the nation. Buhari rebuffs lobby to shift APC convention date. Ohanezi, Igbo not <laughs> interested in leaving Nigeria. Zulum warns on ISIL threats to Nigeria. Oshu APC governorship primary holds February 19th. Nigeria rejects coup as means to change government. And Ladoja high chiefs to endorse Balogu as Ulubado. Okay, which story? Yes, so Governor Babagana Zulum of Banu State is saying that um, ISWAP is a threat to our country. Um, the news is that, you know, they're coming all the way from Libya. They are settling in all these countries that are neighbors. And, that, uh, and he's saying that, see, ISWAP is a more sophisticated, better funded, <coughs> and more educated group than Boko Haram. Um, that uh, federal government, Nigeria, needs to look at retooling the military. The military needs to look at re-strategizing its plan in fighting insurgencies, or else Boko Haram will be child's play compared to... Um, ISWAP, if given the grounds to fester in our country. And um, he says that there's also need for external assistance. He says America, Britain, with all their army and all their equipment, still um, seek external assistance when they find themselves in situations like this. And that the idea of using mercenaries is not a bad idea. The federal government, yes, he acknowledges that there have been some wins concerning fights against Boko Haram, but... Um, Engaging mercenaries will go a long way in helping. And then um, in the same vein, we have the Minister for Information. 
he says he was pointing out that the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit have discovered in their investigation 96 financiers of terrorism, mm. 424 associates and supporters of these financiers, 123 companies that are involved, 33 bureau de change companies, 26 mm. suspected bandits and um, kidnappers, seven co-conspirators, and then they said 45 have been arrested um, in relation to this. But then, you know, the way this was couched, I don't know if that's exactly how he said it. He said they'll get their day in court. I'm like, financiers of terrorism, we'll you get, get your day, day in court. court. Why are we not dragging them through the Give media? Their we are seeing their faces and their names and calling them yeah. out on it. So yeah. I don't get it. It's so yeah. tame. Mm. In Nigeria, you name them and then they'll get away at the end of process. Even the ones that were prosecuted do get away here. Mm. But if it's abroad, they don't get away. Mm. Let's have a substantive, tight, what, well done case. So mm. that by the time we're trying this, we're, we're setting up the consequences. But if we don't yeah, know them, don't you think they can easily hide? Exactly. And Let we don't know hear anything. Names. Let's know them they first. They name them and then they buy their ways out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, Ohanes, Ohanes. Yeah, Ohanes Indigo is saying that um, it's time for the Igbo people to you know, have the presidency for 2023, that Igbos are not secessionist or separatist. Igbos are prepared and deserve the presidency. And it is politically defensible and morally justifiable. So he went ahead to say they had a very long, it was called a marathon meeting, a meeting in Enugu State. And um, they talked about, aside from the presidency, saying that um, it's a right, it's the time for this decision to be taken, it's the time. It's like an idea that its time has come. Quoting the scripture saying that there's a time for everything and it's the time for Igbo people to, you know, have the presidency. They also talked about the incarceration of Onamdi Kanu, that uh, the federal government should, you know, tamper justice with mercy, that it's also time for uh, them to use mercy on this particular case. Then he talked about um, uh, the fact that um, a lot of things are going on right now and other people have had, w one of the issues that we have in the country is the issue of unfairness and injustice, and if we trace it back to history, how we had the civil war and everything, we realize that people still felt a bit of marginalization. But when we give an Igbo person an opportunity right now, because it has been agreed, we now see how things will turn out differently. Mm. So the vice president attended the um, ECOWAS Extraordinary Summit at yesterday, and they were talking specifically about the recent coup that's been happening in Africa. Uh, they're saying that that, was, that which happened in Mali started that um, the, the ripple effect uh, that happened in Guinea and Burkina Faso, and saying that democracy remains the, the preferred system of government across mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. and that all the presidents alongside he, he, he was there with the Ghanaian president, um, Akudo, uh, Akufo, Ado yeah, also, Akufo. saying that um, they were totally, they condemned the military takeover, and they had been talks with the military junta to ensure that um, um, normalcy is restored in this state, and that Across the, country, across the continent, <coughs> they are in agreement that democracy is the way and it's not, that the only change of government has to be a democratic system, that not mm. military. Okay, let's move on quickly to the punch. PDP CSO's Lampoon FG as NFIU uncovers 96 terrorism financiers. Kwara Baptist School shot as fresh crisis erupt over hijab. Kingmakers nominate Lekon Balogun as new Ulubado. Police smash Lagos Ibadan, highway kidnap syndicates, gang members flee. Korocha meets Buhari, alleges harassment by EFCC politically motivated. Agwekoya threatens to free Igboho through traditional means. <coughs> Courtroom crowded as Ogun teenage killers arraigned, remanded. Um, reps subsidy, <coughs> refineries repairs panel may invite NNPC marketers. Uh, Ohane is inaugurate lobby panel restates ego presidency benefits. Okay. Mm. Which story are we taking yeah, a punch? So Let's start with the Quara Baptist okay, so, uh, yeah. hijab. What happened? So yesterday, um, around 8 a.m., some students were protesting the la um, discrimination against hijab wearing students in Quara um, Oyu Baptist High School hijab mm -hmm. in Oyu local government yesterday. and non government attacks them, unleashed terror on them, and one mm. of them suspected is suspected to be dead now. His name is Abin Mustafa. And of course, as expected, the government has reacted. They've shut down the school. The state's commissioner for education and human rights capital development, Sadat Umudibo Kau, says that the government is totally frowning against this, that, you know, government unreservedly condemns 
the flagrant discrimination against anyone, any students, on grounds of religious um, differences or such discrimination in any school, and it will not be tolerated by government within their state and <coughs> public institutions. I think that this is the right thing to do. They should find a way to resolve this matter so that this does not continue mm. subsequently. This is the second of so, such um, attacks within schools in Pura State. And the state government has continuously said that, you know, they have unreserved right to coexist and, you know, use the hijab. So the government have said that. So why, 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 why were schools. these guys protesting? Was that school saying that the children should come in hijab? The school is insisting that they are a Baptist school, but this is oh. a government-owned public facility within the school. We know colonial schools that were taking over had their history, but government now owns those schools and they must be allowed to govern the state. Okay. The other police, story. yes, okay. arrested um, 33 suspected criminals, including members of different kidnapping gang terrorism, uh, motorists and travelers on the Lagos Ibado Expressway. So the suspected uh, kidnappers were arrested by men of the Oyo State Police Command. And um, that included those that were operating at the Onigari se section of the expressway. They said some wedding guests were uh, recently abducted. So they mentioned the names of uh, some of the people, Ali Umaru, Isiaka Ibrahim, and Tambaya Usman. According to the police, they said they got an intelligence report that led them to you know, get all of these people. And they also arrested one of the uh, suspects, which is uh, Bashiru Abubakar. Um, alias Maku Maku. He said he's a member of the gang terrorizing the Lagos Ibado Expressway, especially the one that happened on January 14th, around 3.30 p.m. So while he was confessing, he mentioned other names, Abu, Babuga, Umaru, Belel, one Ibrahim, one Buyo, Habu Kosoko, alias on top, and one Dan Liti. And, um, you know, investigations are ongoing on how to get those ones. And he confessed that he's the one that supplies uh, the criminals food and uh, drugs in the bushes. So he's been taken into custody and hopefully they will fish out the other people. Yeah, so the former governor of um, Imo State and uh, presidential aspirant Rocha Sokoracha um, went to see the president yesterday and um, after his meeting he was responding to reporters and he said that um, he, was, he visited the president. Okay, so first of all we know that few days after he said he will be running for um, office, they said the EFCC, EFCC came after him for an alleged sum of, uh, you know, for fraud, uh, misappropriation. And so he has said that he has come to see the president, not because he's asking the EFCC to back up because he's guilty, but that EFCC, that, is some, that the person that has instigated this investigation is, is definitely one politically motivated, and this person is a coward that does not want to be exposed, and that EFCC had one time claimed they recovered the sum of 5.9 billion from his account, which the court has found untrue. And so his visit to the president is to make sure that, um, you know, the um, office of the presidency makes EFCC um, follow the law, that because EFCC was... Um, created by the law, and so they must follow the law when it comes to issues like this, and they have no right right now to investigate him if it's not for political reasons. And, you know, he just said a lot of things. So I, I, I agree with him. If this is, um, um, if this visit is about, you know, there's the way the law should follow mm. when it comes to investigation like that, that is true, and not asking to back up because of who he is. Yeah. Mm. But if he's found guilty, if there is any reason for EFCC to investigate him, then he should allow himself to be investigated and then he should prove himself in court. So it's, remember the boys that were arrested for killing their girlfriend? I don't know if you recall that story. The case yeah. has started the magistrate court in Isabu Ogun State on Thursday. Uh, the four teenagers who killed and murdered a young girl, Sophia, a 20 year old girl, who was one of, the, one of them's girlfriends, has been remanded in prison. The defenders, Balogu, Usta Din, Majakodumi, Soli Din, Abdul Ghaffar, Lukman, mm -hmm. and Wariz Oladendi, 18 years old, 18, 19 year old kids. So they actually allegedly severed the head mm -hmm. of Kende and uh, burnt it in a pot for ritual. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they have been arraigned in court, and we continue to follow that story because uh, it was quite crowded. There were a lot of people in the courtroom that morning, but um, we're happy that the case has started, and hopefully, this girl will get justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll go to other papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. So we're moving on to Daily Sun. FG uncovers 96 terrorism financiers arrest 47, 45. 2023, Igbo presidency will save Nigeria, says Ohanese. <coughs> so Cook, Pabio secures over 10 billion naira for East-West Road. Three fear dead, others missing as FPSO's vessel explodes in Delta waterways. We are open to peaceful negotiations with federal government and other nationalities, says IPOP. Nigeria, UK threatens security defense partnership. Okay. Okay, let me quickly take a quabby. Um, Go ahead. The Minister for <coughs> Niger Delta Affairs has received, not secured, received um, 10.4 billion of the 2021 Sukuk. Um, sovereign foreign uh, funds issuance that was released from the Minister for Finance. So they are entitled under the Niger Delta to about 35 <coughs> million, um, billion of that amount, and 10.4 billion has been issued. They have a balance of 25 billion. This is supposed to help with the East West rules, and the Niger Delta Ministry is also um, expected to raise a certain amount of financing for that road as well. Yes, so the federal government and the United Kingdom are saying that they are strengthening their security defense partnership in order to fight terrorism and build um, regional security. So the agreement was reached uh, during the first UK-Nigeria security and defense partnership dialogue in London. According to the British High Commission, he said this uh, new commitment that they made uh, is going to be like the first ever UK-Nigeria security and defense partnership and they are going to be working to tackle shared threats and keep both British and Nigerian people safe. I also said that it includes commitment to work together to improve civil policing standards, protect human rights, and recognize the importance and role of women in achieving sustainable peace. They also mentioned that they are going to be supporting Nigeria fight uh, terrorist groups like ISWAP and Boko Haram. And Nigeria and the UK have you know, gone a long way in terms of history. This is the time that we begin to build alliances on how we can fight some of these crimes. So IPUB. I probably be saying that um, through their obesity secretary, Emma Powerful, that they are open to peaceful negotiations with the federal government and other nationalities because ISWAP, according to them, is a peaceful organization. So before we enter into any peaceful engagement with Nigeria, Nigeria must show us that it is favorable and disposed towards peace. We are ready for peace if they need our peace because IPOB is a peaceful Non-violent movement, our doors are open for meaningful and sincere, peaceful engagement with other nationalities in Nigeria and even the federal government if they are ready for peace. So that's good to know. Yeah. And we hope that indeed that they can have peaceful it's conversations and negotiation on this. We're going to take the one more story. Yes, I was going to take the um, third occurrence that happened yesterday. So a floating production, storage and offloading FPSO um, facility. It's an offshore um, facility, I think, for... Um, for, for oil, oil excavation. So um, they said it exploded and sank yesterday. Mm. Um, the CEO of SEPCO, that's the company mm. in charge of it, has said that, have confirmed this accident and they said that um, even though no fatalities have been reported, they can confirm that they had about, they had 10 members mm. of their crew mm. on that facility mm. and that they are doing everything um, you know, to just contain it and investigation is going on right now with the um, safety of those um, crew members in mind. Um, um, some people say 13, the CEO is saying that there were 10 of them, so it's really sad, but we know um, it's also, it also, it also made the news, apart from the people which, that have lost their, who, may, who were in this incident, also the production you know, of 22,000 barrels per day mm. uh, that we do every day has to has been put on hold yeah. because of this incident and so. Okay. So the loss in a lot of ways, yes, the environmental the implication of that, um, that explosion yesterday for me is worrisome. I know you've added the lives of people that might be on the Likely, facility. Yeah. Okay, Vanguard terrorism, I saw poised to take over Nigeria, Zulu ones. Uh, somebody start the encounter story. I was kidnapped, trafficked mm. for sex in four countries. Mm. Power sharing, social injustice, frustrating Nigeria's development. Nigeria needs urgent measures to address high fertility rates, Buhari. What restrains Lagos government from demolishing equi houses? We supply food, drinks to kidnappers on Lagos Ibano Expressway, and 30 crew members missing as oil production vessel explodes. 
Okay. Okay, let me quickly take the court restraining um, Lagos State Government. So, um, a Lagos High Court yesterday sitting in Ekwe has restrained the officials of Lagos State Government and Lagos State Government from continuing to demolish properties of the Edu family descendants along the Lake Ekwe Expressway. So, this family had sued Lagos State Government to court over some of their property lands reclaimed by the government and um, subsequent demolition of their properties. And according to the judge, um, Justice S.A. Olaito, he says, I noticed that I observed the court is congested with people carrying placards and protesting over the demolition of their houses by the Lagos State government and its agencies. And so he is ordered that status quo remains and is maintained till this matter is seen to the end before we can decide, before the government can decide to start to enforce mm -hmm. such demolition. I think this is the right way to go. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. okay, go ahead. So, um, on the, this is a story of a young girl on the 11th of June, 2021, um, she was abducted. She had left school, and this is in Benin, Edo State. She was going home. She had stopped the taxi. She got in. The taxi were two other girls and the driver and another man. And she said she thought everything was fine until wherever they were going, he started taking the wrong directions. And when she dared to ask, she was warned not to speak or she would be killed. Mm. Anyway, her journey took her from Kotonu to Mali, where it was really that they had kidnapped her to use her for sex. Mm. And she was moved from one place to the other, forcefully, mm. um, you know, um, raped. And in the end, eventually she was able to escape by divine, you know, she said she woke up one day and just somehow she saw a light and she was able to escape. And she called her mom, who used Google Map and everything, and located where she was in Burkina Faso. Hey. She was picked up from there and she was brought home. And when she came home, of course, went to the hospital, found that she was pregnant, and oh she was pregnant with twins. Oh. And during her, you know, while she was there, she lost the babies, of, um, sadly, as well. And um, she says, even though now she's escaped that, um, that ordeal, somehow these kidnappers are still trying to lure her in. So oh. the conversation is really about what is going on in that part of our country. There are people still, till today, luring girls Young into girls. telling them that there are jobs in other <coughs> countries kidnapping girls for things like this. Just a really, really young girl, very sad. My auntie actually got a help this year. She mm. called me. The girl said that, she, she just said, realized a girl who still start to work, <coughs> was saying that she was um, kidnapped from, from, from Ghana, mm -hmm. Lagos, mm. she was in Nigeria, and they were en route to a different country. Ooh. So she was ask, asking my auntie to help her. That she escape. Go by escape. They were trying to just get some money, to earn some money. So they, they took her there, hopefully to earn some money for a few months, Ooh. and then they continue their continue journey. Their journey. Wow. What? Imagine that. I mean, wow. I yeah. <gasps> Please, I have a quick story here. Yeah, yeah. So the president spoke at the launch of the revised national policy on population for sustainable development, inaugurated uh, the National Council on Population Management. They are talking about how to manage our population. And the president is stressing the need for urgent measures to address Nigeria's high fertility rate through expanding mm -hmm. access to modern <laughs> contraceptive methods across the country. So they've realized that we are burning plenty, plenty. And the population is 72% uh, of our population are the youths. 30, uh, um, um, most of them are below 30 years, while half of the population are the females, and they are in their reproductive years from 15 to 48 years. So they're trying to devise methods of counseling, you know, talking to people that we need to uh, try as much as possible not to bomb plenty because it's going to be um, have an adverse effect on how we are reproducing. We know the issues at hand. We do not have enough money to cater for everybody. I think this advice should be uh, focused strictly on men. Yeah. You will tell this guy, that guy, that made the round that's yesterday. man, Al Hassan Ado Dogua, who said yeah, he had 28 yeah, children. Yeah, yeah it's, he, it's he should just start with him. Yes. So once they, if a president should call him. It's too late with him. He has already yeah, had yeah, but he should be able to be championing <laughs> yeah. because, oh, okay, because so. he should call him to champion yeah, because. But, but no, the who else? Are the ones who are supposed to. I think there was a story that made the rounds on social media yesterday. 26 year old boy that did a vasectomy and put it up and said, I really don't want kids. Oh my God. I felt bad. Anyway, maybe Nigerian Tribune FG discussion. links 123 companies, three bureau de Jange to Iswap and Boko Haram. Okoro Chara reports EFCC to Buhari over harassment. <laughs> One feared killed in protest over use of hijab in school. APC Convention Boni Committee finally writes INEC on February 
26 to date. And the uh, kidnapping police bus 12 man gang terrorizing terror travelers on the Lagos Ebon Extra Street. I think we're taking most of the stories in yeah, tribute. Sure. One story that caught my attention The Guardian is the top man, CNN, who had to resign because of the sexual uh, relationship he had with the colleagues. So, CNN's ethical challenge that brought down its president. It's mm. a big story in the Guardian, and I thought it was quite interesting. Yeah. So, because he was also. Uh, the boss when the Chris Cuomo mm -hmm. had to resign, you know, mm -hmm. because what, what happened with this brother okay. who was the governor and all the sexual uh, harassment allegations. Now, the boss, the top man himself, was actually in a relationship with another um, correspondent. I think she's a vice president, Gulost, according to the papers. They started, they practically started working in CNN in the early days, and they've been working together for 20 years. And if they, they didn't have a relation, um, uh, romantic relationship until fairly recently, mm -hmm. and then <coughs> when it was found, he actually sent a mail and chose to resign. That's because of the company policy. Yeah. And that speaks volumes yeah. to how the CEO, the top man, says, you know, because mm -hmm. I have, I'm in love with Mari. I'm I got to resign. I got to resign. Mm -hmm. No, it was because stayed. he was caught. He came oh, out in the investigation. Now, well, let's the story well. Beautiful. The nice part of it is that <laughs> I sent a mail out yeah. acknowledging uh, that he had it. That he had yeah. goofed. You know, some of these things, they're, they're very Oyibo-ish because yeah, it doesn't sound very Nigerian. We don't Nigerian. resign here. Well, it's something to emulate. Yeah. We don't you resign. think yeah. we don't resign of here? Well, if, it's a if you have a policy and you have you are found short, whoever you are, you should resign. Mm. There could be an so argument will, that as long as you're still, as things. long as it's not affecting your job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, for effective. example, there are companies, certain companies that if you're in different departments, so you're the it's CEO okay. and she is in maybe marketing or something, it doesn't even affect your work. Mm. It doesn't make it right. But mm. yeah. different company policies have I different. I get it. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're saying that when you do it in a small company, like it reflects on your country as a whole. So mm. when you ask for some people to resign, you say in the companies they don't resign because their work still counts, then at the top in government, so don't ask for them to resign, resign. when they don't do what mm -hmm. they are meant to do. All right, <laughs> let's go to break. When we come back, we move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Staying with us. So, our first hot topic today is about this issue that was raised in the newspapers that we just read birth control pills. Is it the right thing to do at this time? I mean, BC read the story, which I thought was interesting, that the government is considering that we should find measures to control our population. Mm -hmm. But people like Nima have said, oh, come on, follow me. You know, and mean? she said repeatedly for over the years that, listen, you can't be counting kids for me. I mean, it's mm -hmm. yeah, not my children. But yeah. should we now come and have a conversation around the need? Especially, we had that lawmaker. <laughs> Let me read his name again, just in case we forgot him. His name is, uh, oh, he's actually majority leader mm -hmm. of the House of Representatives, Al Hassan Adogudawa, delivered of the 28th child recently. And um, he was actually talking about it. And it's important we discuss these things. <clears throat> is, is, is how to remarry culture. And um, really? what is economically um, expedient for a country to, to do? So that's really the conversation. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Should we start? Would you agree if the government says you can't have more than two children? Would you accept hmm. to have just two children or one. if that is going to be the right thing to do or the necessary thing to do to help control the population? That's really the conversation. Let's hear your yeah. thoughts. Call us on 081 You can also tweet to us at TVC, uh, your view hashtag TVC, and also, um, yeah, on all the various messages on your screen. Yeah. So, <laughs> BC, what is that? You want to start? Yeah, okay. I was laughing because I was saying the Nigerian way, they'll tell you have two children, then they will go ahead and have five and <laughs> ten, <laughs> and you will be holding placard like you told us to have two, how come these government officials are having five? Mm. Anyways, uh, hmm. we need to look at our population and how, how fast it's growing. 
and the fact that our population is growing, um, you know, the population vis-a-vis -vis our economic um, issues yeah, right is, yeah. now, economic security, you know, and just mm -hmm. the inefficiencies of our government because they seem to find re they seem to be finding it really difficult to manage this population given our limited resources. But whatever the impact will be, whatever the positive impact will be on the economy would not be in five or ten years. We're talking many years down the line. Mm -hmm. So many people have already given birth. Um, the gentleman in question has given birth to 28. So we have to find a way to make sure he does not give birth to the remaining two that he's looking towards. But as a country, we need to tell ourselves the truth. Mm. We have very limited resources. And we need to make sure that every child gets a good education, good housing, good health care. And the, um, the number of people we have in our country, the less, the more we have, the less we'll be able to cater for them. That's on the one hand. The second hand is how do we do it? We always, whenever we talk about contraception, family planning, we focus on the women. But I think if we really are serious about um, stopping just multiple births, we have to talk to the men. We have to start talking about male contraception. We have to start talking about male, 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 um, <coughs> family, male family planning. We're talking about a vasectomy. Mm. We're talking about maybe, a, maybe like a policy. If you have more than five children, you cannot run for office. If you have more than three children, you cannot run for office. Mm. If you have more than, you will not get money. it. So maybe if we put it that way, because just to tell women, don't use contraception, we know women who know how important this is. Even for right. their health reasons, they don't want to have more kids. But they have husbands that are saying, if I hear, right. do you understand? So if you put it now on the man, and I'm saying that I am, I'm highlighting the fact that a man can decide for a woman in Nigeria whether she should have more or less. is because the way the dynamics of marriage works for majority of marriages in Nigeria is that the man is the breadwinner, the man determines you know, right. everything. So it but pays me, for everything. I mean, let me come to the BC on this, because I mean, she's raised quite a few issues there not just about us being facing the reality of the situation that yeah. we, are, we are overpopulated, mm -hmm. but who, how do we go about it? Someone are saying we should do vasectomy, someone yeah. are saying that we should focus more on the men. What are your thoughts on this? Do you agree? So, um, you know, she's just um, highlighted the economic aspect, and that is exactly what the government is looking at. We have a teeming population of young people. Over 70% are basically young people, uh, women, young girls within, uh, you know, reproductive age, according to statistics. And that is really worrisome because any background belly can enter and you just be popping it. But I want to look at it from the emotional and psychological aspect, which a lot of us ignore most of the time. How, I, I always worry, first of all, that people just churn out kids without thinking of how to guide them emotionally, how to nurture them emotionally, which is what is missing with majority of Nigerians. We do not have empathy because we did not learn empathy from our parents. It's just a few people are becoming aware now that are now learning how to pay attention to the needs of other people. It's just about me, 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 me. And that's the Nigerian mentality. That's what we see in our parastatals. That's what we see in government. That's what we see in leadership. In, in, it cuts across every sphere of life Even in, in driving, this country. In, driving. Yeah, in this country. So are you churning out these kids? Because let's talk about the elites, for instance. They have the money to take care of them and put them in best schools. But do they have the time to give them that emotional needs that these children require to nurture them? Aside from the elites, now let's go to the, uh, you know, the general people. You are churning out only you. You have four, five, six kids, and you're struggling to feed them. You're struggling to uh, uh, pay your rent. You're struggling to put them in good schools. And before you know it, at 15, 16, you're expecting your children to go out there and bring men that will give them cars, that will buy houses for them, that will do this for them because you have failed in your responsibility as a parent to nurture these children till they get to adulthood. So it cuts across everything. And we have crime on one hand because there are lots of children who feel like their parents cannot take care of them. They have to start funding for themselves. I had a student in the university at the time who was learning. Thankfully, she was making hair. And she was sending money home. I think she was about 16 or 17 at the time. She had the responsibility as a child to still be fending for her parents back home. So it's not about just churning kids. What sort of mindset do you have that you can just pop, because you are fertile, you can just pop it out and God will take care of them. Yeah. God will handle them. We need to start working on that. Okay. When it comes to the population, um, 
I, I, I believe that we could have policies. I believe that we could actually mm. have policies. I think um, one of these countries well, can it did it. Uh, China did it. Anything so can work when we are ready for it to work. Mm. Simple. Mm. Okay, let me come to Nima. Nima, what are your thoughts? <laughs> you, do you, Why should they laugh me? Believe you. Because I know that, I mean, culturally, <laughs> yes, we want to uphold our culture and our belief system, but the truth is that how do we marry? How do we marry culture and what is required as a, as a country? Mm. So I spoke um, recently, I think last year, no, 2020, at an event. Um, a law firm organizes this event. It was huge. Myself, Abike Dabri, and the UN representative in Africa. And I, could, I did not speak in support of mm. just irresponsibly bringing children. So I cannot sit here and be African now. But the truth is, <laughs> no, but in Africa, on Komofolo more truly. Mm. And because those days, parents planned for their children. It was, you know, modernization that brought about, and because of that cultural belief, you see government over the years reflect what we believe. Government never planned along the numbers, we just had the numbers. If you had serious governments planning along the numbers, all the census that they were doing, the uh, birth registrations that they were, were having, the, if they counted for anything, we would be better off today. Every government subsequently never planned along the numbers. So we have numbers up north, underutilized that you know, they presently be taken advantage of by every form of uh, criminality that we can excuse. We call them different names, terrorism and all of that. And, there are large numbers that we didn't work with. If we had worked with them, probably we'll be where other countries are. We'll be that strength of our, of our numbers will show. In you know, aside the marketability that people see in them and bringing things stuff here, we'll be able to produce with that number and send out. So I'm not in support of um, birthing children anyhow. But in the situation where a person caters for their children from birth till death on their own. Do you then want to regulate what you don't control? Our public schools, governments, you know, they just have schools, they don't have the numbers, they don't know how, what they're doing with them. If I'm a rich person, I'm an MK or a Biola and I have four wives, of course I'm going to have children and I have provided for those children till I die, till when they get to adulthood. So how do you want to regulate what you don't control, what you don't work with, what does not really bother you when you're sitting on the decision table? If you make policies today, just like Miriam said, the policy makers are the ones who break the rules. Mm. They'll say, no, two children only, but they have five children, and they start to see exceptions and exceptions and exceptions. Take care of them. So, I, I, I'm well, not so I mean, I think the, most of the big nations of the world, they work with numbers. China, yes. the U.S. So, population could actually work in our favor. Mm -hmm. yes. The problem is that exactly. we don't have the economic <laughs> strength and um, the, the, to, show uh, the, to, to show it all, to, to, even, to even reflect, mm. to use or utilize these numbers that we have. But my question to you, ladies, and I'll take this after the break, if your husband says he wants to have a vasectomy, would you allow him? After we've had children. As in right now? Back. Yes, right now. When we come back, uh, we don't I mean, finish now. Oh, you're good. Oh, you want born again? We don't born finish now. Mm. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was that easy. It's so easy. It's going to break. We'll break But you should ask the men. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. So staying with us, we're still discussing this issue of birth control, but not from the side of the women. But a, a, a young man yesterday or two days ago put it online that he just had a vasectomy, that he doesn't plan to have children. And we're linking that to what the, uh, President Buhari was say, saying, that we must consider um, this issue of reducing population. We want to focus on this issue of vasectomy. If a husband, and I asked the ladies for the break that, if now you've had your kids, and your husband says, okay, let me support Buhari. Let me just be part of this movement. Mm. And all the men are saying, okay, let's all get a vasectomy. Just to encourage men that, listen, we must stop this exponential growth of our population. Nima, do you, would, you, would you allow your husband to go for that procedure? Okay. I, I, I'm not disallowing him. <laughs> but I would not encourage him. Okay. So if any of such was to be done, it would be done free will. If he chooses that, okay, this is the decision I'm taking for myself, and he knows the consequence for him is okay. I would love, if I wanted to put a stop to a childbirth, do it on myself. Everybody's um, right to the decision their on their body or procedures done on their body is theirs as long as they are sane and, uh, and quite conscious. So if it is his decision, I would not stop him if I am done having children. 
And if, I, if it is my decision when I'm done having children, I would not like him to interfere in it, whatever the reasons are for me. So I won't stop him, but I would not disallow him if he... I don't understand approve of him. semantics. <laughs> no, I would, you know some women who say, okay, we're well, done having children, mm. but I don't want to touch my body, so you go do something. No, I won't do that. Okay. I won't instruct and say, it choice. has to be you. Mm. Once I am done having children, I say to my husband, I think I've had enough children and I want to keep my body... Because what is Islamic is that my health. Mm. Mm. That's, the, yes, that's the basis. But there's the, there's the Nigerian or African way of like this we can never know these things. May we never have, have any be, bad accident uh, and, and then happen. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we have five children. Well, God forbid something happens. You know, mm -hmm. somebody I travels and God forbid the whole family mm -hmm. is wiped down. I feel like, oh my goodness, ah. I've removed, I've tied my tubes, I've removed my ovaries, mm -hmm. I've had a vasectomy, Mariah. I can't have any more children. Mariah. Life happens to people. Sorry, please. And, please. That, and that's the fear people have in not taking this kind of decisions. So we had a, a relative uh, back in uh, one of these um, eastern states. And then I think the husband at the time was working in this uh, big oil company. I think it was Shell or Chevron. I'm not sure right now. Uh, they had uh, uh, four kids. And the man was still asking for, the woman was still asking to have two more, to wow. make it six. They had money. So she just felt, let me just, I want to have these children. The man said, lie, lie. In fact, the fourth one said was a battle. He wanted to take it out. The woman said, it's against my faith. I can't take it out. And so... After how many years? This um, airline, so Soliso crash. I remember that story. Now took two of the kids, and it was remaining two. And the man now came back. Then the lady was way in her 50s. Mm. And I said, can we try? I wish you had, you know. And then it was a battle. She said, lie, lie, I begged you. I said I wanted extra. You said, no, now we are going to manage this too. And it became a real family issue. The man was vexing. You have to. He said, no, at my age, I can't even do that anymore. So, but the thing is, when this sort of thing happens, what will happen will happen. What if you had the six and the, all the six traveled at the same Things time happen, and it happened? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, so you have had the children, just hmm. move on. So uh, there's also something about children is that no, a child does not replace a child. Mm. A child, an individual child is an individual. No other child can replace a child. Yeah. In fact, what you just said reminded me of a story I read on the toilet seat this morning. A lady who, her first pregnancy, she had um, eight babies. She was pregnant with eight babies. At once. But she lost them at, in her 26th month, um, week of pregnancy. And they said even though she went ahead, the story came out because she had just passed on from cancer in her oh. 50s. He said, even though she went on to have three more children, she was just never the same woman. Mm. She said she spent um, about an hour or so just watching as each child came out stillborn. Each mm. child came out, and that thing affected her for the rest of her life. Mm. You cannot replace a child, child for a child. child. So to say that, uh, have so much so mm. that when something happens to two, you... That child is an individual, nothing mm. can replace it. So that's a different, you know, it's a different conversation altogether. Mm. It's important that, um, you know, loss, this story, for me, this is more about losses. Mm. We have, um, um, for me, the policies or the conversations really should be about strengthening this economy, our country, so that these children that we bring in, this, um, country, uh, this country can take them. Okay. They can be a positive. Um, they can be a positive. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yes. Yes. Productive in society. Yes, productive in society. Um, when we talk about the reason why we talk about Nigerian population in such a way that we talk about it like negatively is because when they come, when we have the children, they are doing nothing. Yeah, nothing. They are them. idle. They are, there's nothing that they are doing. But if we say that, if we look at the countries, if we say that most of our young children. Um, in this age, they're all in IT and they're doing something, mm -hmm. or they're all in manufacturing, or they're all in, you know, producing one thing or the other, we will not be talking about the um, negative in, um, right. effect of population. population. We'll be talking about how it is enriching yeah. our economy. Let me economy. take Dr. Moyo. Dr. Moyo, are you there? Please. Happy weekend. Happy weekend to you too. <laughs> Yes, I think this issue of birth control borders on culture. You are trying to touch culture, which is a very difficult issue mm. in Africa. So I think health education and enlightenment will go a long way in curbing children. For example, my grandfather has 30 children, uh, 30 children. That's my maternal grandfather. The same thing too with my paternal grandfather. He had about 20 something children. 
So, and they, they, and it's those kind of cultures, they felt that the, not, the more number of children you have, that's mm. what you show that you're a man. Mm. That, that, that was no. what their ego bright is there. But so, now that kind of setting, a child from that kind of environment, you need a lot of education and enlightenment to convince him that this thing, he needs, he needs uh, it's for economic reasons and for health reasons too, on the woman. Have a nice day, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Weir. So I wanted to say that, you know, to, to deal with the loss of children is not something that you generally feel the same way. It's yeah. peculiar. For some people, the, the, the replacement of the loss helps. Yeah. For me, when it happened to me, I thought it was something I couldn't deal with. But today, every time I see the next baby, I completely, it's only when I'm giving advice or in a very yeah, worst moment, I remember the loss of that child that I didn't have. So for some people, that replacement works. For some, it's easy. But there's this saying, just like Dr. Muyo said in Africa, in my own place, they say, oh, you're Arabu. When a person has a secondary infertility, you know, and the person is yearning for a child. When that child comes, most of the time in my, in my place in Aochi, they'll say, oh, you're able to give that child. Um, we need children to remain, to keep the lineage. So it's beyond economics. That's why governments must reflect the society. You must reflect the way people think. Our government have failed over the years to turn these numbers that our fathers... When they, the when, strength. In the, in the old days when our ancestors, let me even go far, far, because it's far, far down, I decided to have plenty of children. In my own family, if you hear our... They were kidnapping children. And so people started to make sure that this lineage would not be wiped out by the things that were existing at the time. And then later, it became the strength of farming. Mm -hmm. You needed your own children to map your territories. Yeah. When your child grows up, you send your child to one side of your, the farm to start a family, mm -hmm. and you know to keep. So we were growing, we're evolving, picking laws and picking policies from Europe to come and reflect Africa. And that's the clash that we have today. If we had worked with the numbers that we had and the way we were having those numbers, our the strength of our population. region at the time, the farming strength, yeah. probably by now we have those complex problems that Dr. Mokadu, Professor Mokadu talks about. Uh, this, uh, final this topic. Final topic. Well, good morning, Bomo. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're, you're live. Go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, Can please. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Okay. So I'm a first time caller. I'm calling Welcome from to the show. So the issue of uh, overpopulation, you know, we cannot underestimate it. The, uh, the problem with population in this country, first, is religion. I can give children, give birth to children that they cannot take care of. Yes. Hello? I said the issue of overpopulation is tied to religion. Parents give birth to children that they cannot take care of, mm. and they will say God will take care of them. Mm. In Abuja, where I live, you go to the market, you see all these boys, young, young boys, from different parts of the north. They don't have any job. They are just carrying barrels, mm. and they feed by carrying barrels. Nobody is caring for them. Some of them live on, on uncompleted buildings. Mm. Some of them live on the road. And they are living at the mercy of other people. Mm. So when we put away this culture of religion, God will take care of us and plan our family. It will be better for the country. Fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you. We're going to go on a we're going to continue the conversation because I remember even the beggars on the street, they're constantly pregnant, they're constantly yeah. having children. Mm -hmm. yeah. They always just have babies, and yeah. that is probably part of the problem. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still talking about how you hold yourself. Mm. Some of us are culprits on this table because we have more than <laughs> the average amount. But how do we take this issue of controlling <coughs> our population seriously? Not from the part of government, we the people. Okay. people. Yes. Okay. So I, I think um, we first of all have to take responsibility. So while I'll come back to the government a bit because they have a larger role to play, 
uh, if you know that your capacities can give you so 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 number of children, have that number of children and ensure that you take care of them. That's where the responsibility comes in. But if you look at it in the global scale, most of these top economies like uh, China, uh, Russia, um, Japan, India, Brazil, they have huge populations that they have been able to use for their own benefit. So they found ways to use the strength that they have for their economy. Imagine if the 70% of youths they were talking about, 40% were billionaires in this country. Imagine the sort of economy that we will be building. But because we have not been able to use the strength that we have, we see it as a problem. So this is where the individual person will now look and say, OK, um, in the middle class, I'm earning so-so and so. If I look at the systems that the government has provided, uh, quality education, quality health care, good roads and this, I think with my salary and other things that I'm doing, I may be able to raise three children. And you focus on that three. Then we now start looking at those ones on the streets who are just churning out children to re-educate them mm. on the need to have the as much as they can cater for and also find a way because most of these people use that as a form of entertainment mm. you know when you don't have money that thing is just will be hungering you all the time because that's mm. the only way yeah yeah for the big men you can afford to go to clubs you can afford to take trips you can afford to do any form of ah. entertainment that you can but for a very poor man who is just that's the only managing entertainment to, that's the only entertainment you're that kidding me if you just catch somebody you can just have it a few wow. minutes and you're good well, so we now find a way to channel that uh, drive okay. for entertainment to something else, make them a bit more productive mm. so that they have less time to think about just Everything churning out children. Ireland. Tukwe, are you there, Odukwe? Hello? Hello? Good morning, you're live. Good morning, Morayo. Good morning, Alifa. I'm prepared, yes, that's true. Ooh. I'm calling for the first time, even though I'm trying Welcome to the show. <laughs> Well done, girl. Well done, well done. You will be doing great. Thank um, you. The topic this morning is a very sensitive topic. Even many people will not know it's sensitive. Mm. Um, it's good to be able to take care of the children you have. Yeah. Monitor and um, train the children. <laughs> but what about God is the only one that gives children? Mm. You must remember some people are looking for the truth of the book oh, and yeah. they never got it. Mm. Believe me, I don't know why this program is coming today. But you see, um, in my early life, I've got two boys. And I thought, oh, no, that's they're okay. Two boys are okay for me. I'm, I'm okay. I can't take more than that because I need to take, have the children I can take care of. But ladies, when the second one clock seven, my not sit there then in Nigeria. He died. I'm left with one. Then I told God I don't want children again. What if I have removed my womb then or I've done something drastic? Mm. Then I, it, took, it took me about years again before I could get another child, actually. Wow. Believe me, it is the death of that boy that took me away from Nigeria. Mm. Just to relocate. And I'm here now abroad for over 23 years. Just to relocate for a few months. Mm. But thank God, after that boy now, I've got two inks. And in my late 40s, I have another boy again. Wow. Which is 11 years old now. Oh, he's still at 22. But believe me, this program, today, that boy that died, supposed, today's supposed to be his birthday. He's supposed to be his birthday to one today. Oh, oh but as a mother, I still feel him. We would have got three children after that. Hmm. I still miss this thing. I still wish you somebody is going to be supposed to be calling me today. So happy birthday, happy birthday to him. Aww. Everybody is calling me to wish happy birthday. But I remember I had a child today, one year ago. What was his name? Only so, God knows. What was his name? Only God knows. Okay, Miriam asked what was his and name. And assist us. Hello? Miriam was asking what was his name. Pardon? Miriam asked what was his name. The name of the child. I'm sorry, it's raining really everything. It's okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dukwe, for calling. We appreciate your oh, call. So happy touchy. birthday to your late yes. son. I mean, happy that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. Touch yeah. Really touching. You see, but you see, see for people who work exactly. differently, mm. so for her, the, even with the birth of the other children, she you couldn't be on the birthday. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 But it would, it would have been worse if she didn't have more. Mm. You know, she said that, you know, Maybe she, because she had said she was done. But Dolakwa had sent something to her WhatsApp group about countries that are doing 
uh, you have huge population that yeah. are doing well. He said the U.S., China, Russia, Japan, India, and Brazil. India? India. Yes. <laughs> India. I wanted to pick India out of the no, group. I mean India. So yeah, India was probably. like us. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't plan with their numbers for a long time. Uh -huh, and so they had a right. huge population and they were in the indices of world's most poverty, whatever country, world's most clinical, clinical, whatever country. And you saw their government sat up. They turned that narrative around to positive. And they have what they're doing with their population right now. They are the world's destination for medicine, yeah. for uh, medical hospitality. They are the world's destination for vaccines. Even all of us were waiting for them to donate vaccine during the COVID. They've turned that number around. We can do the same. Yes. We have a culture where children mean a lot. In Europe, some countries, even the people by their ways of life, don't want too many children. They don't want to be shouting, see that, stand up. <laughs> they don't want it. But for us here, it's a lonely life for a mother if they don't have children. Nobody, most people here don't sit, accept the fact that they can't have children. Yesterday, when we read about the young man who did vaccetomy on himself, it sounded strange. Some of us uh, a DTD. We believe that he's under a, a spell. A spell. Mm. He's not looking normal. Mm -mm. It's not in our ways of life. We love the population. Our government must learn to proud with that number. Those countries that are now promoting birth control, China and US, they've, taught, they've used the population already. Mm. They are now at a stage where they okay, can Okay, let me that. take Olumide. Olumide, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Thank you very much for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I want to look at it from a completely different perspective. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Go ahead, please. Okay, I want to look at it from a different perspective. Now, the population is growing. But God has created land. The land remains the same. The more we go, the more the competition for space for individuals. So we should take that into cognizance that the space is not growing. Tomorrow, today, if four people are competing for a space, tomorrow it could be eight, and that would make it more difficult. So it's good. We control our population. I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about the future. Right. Right. In future, so with the, the earlier we start, the better. Thank you very much, Olimide. I think we're going to wrap up on this, but um, I think generally we agree that yes, it's important for us to take cognizance of, of our economic realities. But at the same time, don't give birth to children you can that you can't afford. Yeah. Because yeah. I know yeah. life always, but just, but just like our caller Muntukwe mm -hmm. said, life happens to you. Yes, you have planned for mm -hmm. only two children or three children. And then something happens, either you um, lose your job, you can't afford them. You know, you, had, you had five, you're a rich man. Mm -hmm. You had five kids because you can afford it. Mm. But then your business crumbled, everything went down. And then you have five kids, you can't pay their school fees. You're not looking yeah. for one brother or somebody to come and say, can you help me? You know? yeah. So life happens. So regardless of how, even if you can afford it, mm. Plan. just be planning properly and ensure that these children are well. Let me well put you in something. Uh, there's this thing somebody told me recently, and it's been ringing in my head. He said, have the number of children that if anything happens to you or to anybody around you or your spouse, you can pick them and run with. Mm. It's easy. Just yeah. pick them. Born with, yeah. you if you Born with you if you carry. So if it happens <laughs> now and, okay, it's only me and no, these so, children. Yeah. There are three. Carry one for back. Carry one. Carry what one. I can go. If I add another one, I don't know if I can. Yes, but also, even though it's a personal problem, a family issue, a family decision, it also impacts largely on and our population and our community and other families as well. I just quickly went to India because when we were saying India had turned this pop uh, population around, mm -hmm. they still have issues of overpopulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they one do. of the ways that they have helped um, to reduce, they're actually working on reducing population, mm -hmm. reducing the increase in population. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about more men are getting vasectomies, more women are getting contraception. So 48% of their women are actually getting contraception. About 300,000 of their men mm -hmm. in recent times mm -hmm. are so getting the vasectomies. So Maybe quickly, okay, we have to wrap up. <laughs> yes, one minute. You know, for countries that, you know, they don't, they, they're trying to control population without necessarily planning. We don't want to end up with a larger percentage of older generation, no youth. They must plan, you know, the birth control. We don't want to have a situation where the younger generation has that less than number. Be our <laughs> no, it, it might be. We have we to. Right. Like That's what we can take. Years. That's what <laughs> we can <laughs> take from this <laughs> topic. But we come back and move on to another topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. So, you can't have a Friday without celebrity gist. So, one of our celebrities, actress, uh, Ukeria Ananubi, in one of her recent videos, said Nigerians who build all these palatial houses in the villages is foolishness, according to her. She said it's not wise to spend so much money to build a house in a place you rarely stay. Instead, use that money to provide... Um, affordable accommodation for those who are in their need of it. Now, that, that obviously is a noble sentence, sentence to say, but in reality, many people feel that, listen, my responsibility just to my family members or to my, my mother, my father in the village. So if I get wealthy in the city, I go to the village and I build a house there, Maybe my parents can sit down. Sometimes they don't even want, some people even allow their parents to sit There's nobody there, they leave it empty. Yeah. Because you drive home, you drive to this place and you see, I remember when, when I used to go to, um, to see uh, uh, Daddy Nikiti, Femi's dad. And you know, you see a lot of lovely houses, houses and it's just locked up. Yeah. And I'm thinking, ah, what happened? Maybe they come there once a year. So according to her, it's foolishness to do that. That, mm. you know, why don't you rather build houses where people actually live in? What are your thoughts on this? And I'd like to also link that to, uh, to the fact that people ask to be buried in these houses. Mm. And when you bury them in these houses, you can't rent it out again. Yes. You know, it's like, so it's like a, a whole house is like a, it's like a mortuary, ground. it's like a burial ground, like a mortuary for, for, some, for one person, one, the owner of the house. So these are some of the factors that people, that, that, that people go, get involved in. But let me, what, what are your thoughts on this issue of building a house that nobody lives in in our villages? Okay, so I think um, Eukarya is spot on uh, with that conversation. While I would not want to tell people how to spend their money, because if they've worked hard for it, they'll tell you they've worked hard for their money. That is how they choose to spend it. It's none of your business. Go and make your own and build in your village for your community members, you know. But also, I want us to start looking at how to avoid a culture of waste. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very wasteful in this part of the world, where because we are not constantly thinking of other people, we are just focused on being selfish and ourselves. And you put a huge amount of money in building a house. First of all, like if you come into a, go to the east, you build that house and there are deplorable state of the roads. You're not concerned about how you can even get to the house. After all, you are in your big you know, car. You can get in and get out. And then you abandon these houses to once in a year. And I know so, a, a, a few things about houses that when people are not living in the house, it takes a lot to maintain. The houses, as if houses respond to the spirits of people living in them. Mm. If you leave a house, empty for like 10 years, and you compare it with a house that people are living in for 10 years, when you get there, you see the difference in terms of, the uh, the, yes, the condition the of the house, the structure itself. So it's wasteful to just, you know, keep that amount of money. And I also understand that most of the people who just keep that amount of money is their way of tying down the money that they have gotten from somewhere. Because a right-thinking person who is constantly doing business and counting numbers will not want to put in money and just abandon it. You want your money to be working for you. So it's a way of just, okay, we've taken this money, let's find somewhere to put it. And you put those houses there, and you leave it there, nobody's attending to it. So if you're building for your family members, that somebody will be there to maintain the house, probably your relatives are still there, it's a different ball game. But to build such houses in those uh, villages that you come once in a year, once in two years, I think is wasteful. But so are you so, saying that when you now go, go home for, to the villages, you have to come pay for stay a guest in a house? So, I mean, for them, they, say, they, they see it as cost. That it's they not costly. With, it's hmm. cheaper to stay in a hotel if you're going there once in a year than to yeah. have... Do you know how much they put in those structures? And if you enter those sort of buildings, I've seen a few of them, especially in the East, you need to see the designs, the gold and everything. I just think it's wasteful. I agree with you, BC. Um, I think but it's, what um, Kira is saying is beyond foolishness. It's a culture mm. of statement making. It shows status you, symbol, yeah. status symbol that you know, and a statement making that you've been successful the city. In, in the, the city. city. You don't want to come home and you're putting a, a, a building together. I, not you know, I don't want to say it like that, but the mentality is that when you come home and you're putting a structure on ground, it has to reflect the level of success you've had that outside you done in the journey. So, mm. till tomorrow, my people call village, even though home is Lagos, where I was born and I live with my family, they call Lagos abroad. Journey, and when I go to Aucha and I want to build a place in Ibi, it has to be palatial, it has to be a reflection, reflection of, your, Lagos of the life. level of success so they mm. can say, ah, Is that TVC gay? This house, mm. you know. So, what the disconnect is that why I say it's a wrong mentality is that I have the house, but I don't have road, 
to go to the house. To the house. <laughs> and the place is not a... You have to... Your boy will reach the house. Electricity is If I will almost reach the devil. Electricity is for the grid. You have to get the water. <laughs> you will yeah. buy your electricity. And so when other factors happen, you what you do when you build a house, you must build the house that reflects the sustainable kind of building yeah. for your environment. Yeah. You don't want to live in a place where the land landslides happen. Let me move to you. Let me move to you. There was a book I read. I can't remember the author. He was saying that he got funding from the U.S. to uh, build boreholes in certain communities in, in, in a certain village. Mm -hmm. so he was so excited. He got this money and he built, I think, about, about maybe 15 or so villages. And he was really happy about that. And they got water. But guess what? He, he, I mean, he learned from that lesson because he used some really um, interesting equipment okay. to build a boreholes that, that they, they couldn't fix. So when he broke when down, fault, that oh. was it. So uh, in six months later, so they called him, ah, your uncle, the borehole doesn't work again. They mm -hmm. called it, they had to bring in a legislation from the city. And that was not sustainable, bringing in somebody from the city to come and fix it. So the people in the neighborhood are not educated enough mm -hmm. to use that. So you build a beautiful house and you put in some, 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 kind, of, some kind of air conditioner or some kind of mm -hmm. gadgets that requires a special maintenance. And the people in that community can do it. So no you'll be happy about it the first Christmas. Second Christmas, yes, by third Christmas, mm -hmm. it's done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you just waste all this time and there's nobody. So it's part of what uh, Bukira is probably pointing mm -hmm. at. But yeah. come to you, Maya. Yeah, I, I agree with her. And I think that um, a lot of these things happen because um, people were looking for... Um, the, the ones that I know of, that I have seen happen, are people who, at a certain point in their lives, they had the money to have these houses all across the country and abroad. But then, you know, life happens, and then you have this village home that you don't visit as much. And then you also, life happens, children are not going back to the village as much. So we used to have people who, that village house did not sit empty. They visited it maybe three to four times a year. Yeah. But their children have, you know, they've grown up differently. They don't really have any ties to the village. Mm. For the parents is that maybe I grew up in this village and I'm going back to even to my, my roots, my, my old friends, my mm -hmm. old community. But mm -hmm. for the children, they never grew up there. They just come to visit mm -hmm. and are counting the time for when they will leave. So mm. when those parents pass away, then you have houses empty. that are left empty. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's also that mentality which you sort of highlighted where you're supposed to go away and then send money home so that develop where you are. But the way we develop is to show, see, look at who I am, look at how big I am. Mm. So really and truly, if we want to do it right, and I think Oibo people know how to do these things right, they build a community center. Mm -hmm. They build a, a health center, you know, things like that. Yes, we don't, want, we don't want to tell anyone how to spend their money. But if we're talking about how do we build sustainable, um, you know, um, legacies, mm -hmm. I think these are the sort of things that you can hold on yeah. to their legacies because your health would run down. Mm -hmm. But that health center will forever have your name or your name yeah. on it, yeah. and people will constantly refer to it and how it has helped mm -hmm. different lives. Let me take Helen and I'll come to you because you touched on some really important points I would like to... Um, up on. Helen, are you there? Thanks for calling. Hello. Good morning. Yes, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning, Mario. Good morning, ladies. Okay, um, I love this conversation. I hope the Igbo people are not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm from Delta State. Yes, we, we have a village house. In fact, let me say, let me call it a resort that my late dad built there before he passed away. A resort with golf course with uh, palatial, in fact, many chalets, eight-bedroom house, ground, swimming pool, barbecue. Wow. My dad built it. He passed away six years ago. And to be honest with you, it's been horrendous for trying to keep that place alive. Mm -hmm. So we have to we, we have security, people that we keep their supplies. Sometimes they go. You have to, you have to do the gardening and try to do the lawns and do the, make sure the landscaping is. But I tell you, we're getting tired. So mm. we, have, you know, we have to spend money. The last time we went there, we went to our Sabbath to go and stay. Mm. We went to stay in the yeah. hotel and then we would come back, you know, the village to just see mm. what they're doing. But we never slept there. So sometimes I ask myself, why do we really have this? I mean, I didn't build it. My dad built it. But yeah. I don't know why we have it there or mm. what. Thank you, Helen. You oh, Helen, you just gave us a fantastic mm -hmm. angle, True. which I'd like to stay on. Because we see this a lot. 
Somebody has a beautiful idea for a lovely resort. It happened with Tinapa. Tinapa was a phenomenal idea. Mm -hmm. But it was put in the center where we, I, mean, I, I know, I know Moabu to try to um, bring the whole of Ebony life to Tinapa. But eventually it wasn't sustainable. They didn't yeah. have power, they didn't have this, they didn't have that. It was, they were trying to so hard to make it work. Eventually they had to leave. So Tinapa is in the middle of, is the cross river state, and they, are having, they don't have the economic capacity to make that thing come alive. Mm. The same thing, you build a, a Disneyland in the community, and everybody's coming all the way from all the world to come to Disneyland. So he had a fantastic idea to have that resort. Yeah. But the community at that time, they don't, probably don't need a the resort. They need probably houses to live in. Mm. They need somebody to build nice townhouses or big houses for the, that can that, that, that affordable housing for the average person. So sometimes is that priority, what do we think is right for us to build in, our, in these villages? Mm. What is the... And it goes back to what I always say. Mm. Those of us that like to eat bacon, I go back can to this bacon. Can you sustain bacon? So mm. you travel abroad and you eat bacon. Like, I want bacon. You bring bacon with dollars in Nigeria. When it is ogi, that the community where you grew up can take. Mm. So it's only to refine ogi, make it affordable. This is what the people will eat. And you will make money because it's pure water. Pure water with people, people are buying money with pure water. But no, you have to bring in the, what's the, what's the one, the, the champagne, the, um, mm. the, what's the, can you give me the name of the champagne? Yes, now the Yeah, moes and all that. You know, you got to bring those things. So it goes back to this, you're building a resort in a community where you can't sustain it. Mm. So, so I, I think um, we need to start paying attention to the reality on the ground yeah. and taking away the ego of who I am and what I have achieved. So if you take away that ego and you say, okay, I want to connect to my roots, I want to build a place in my village so that at least my children can come from time to time, we'll have somewhere to stay. And you make it like a regular bungalow thing that you can build. And always ensure that you have somebody, maybe a relative who will be managing the house. It's easier. So. And I know that people get tired of things. So you have this house now, it's looking very beautiful. Mm -hmm. After a few years, you feel like, please, I can't Next. even stay in that place again. Yeah. When we go to the village, yes. I'm going to stay in a hotel. My husband was having a conversation with a friend recently. And the guy was saying, you people need to build a house in the village so that you can, your children will be used to your roots. And my husband was like, I don't understand. My own village, I've not gone there in years. I can't even find a way to this village. I was born and bred in Lagos. My children now don't know that place. So why do I want to go and put money and build something that tomorrow they may say they don't even want to stay in the country? How do I get them to manage that? Uh -huh. That his own parents' house, they are still struggling to sell it in the village yeah. because there's nobody to take care of it. But the guy said, no, you have lost your roots. It was a heated conversation in the sitting room. I mean, I just said that I was looking. I said, me, I'm not going to any village with anybody. <laughs> I am here. Let me take this call. Hassan, because this is such a crucial conversation. Good morning. Good morning, Hassan. You're live. Good morning, executive members of the panel. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Uh, you see, this discussion reminds me of, uh, of Ali Masrui in his triple heritage, where he says, when the whites are going to the moon, we are busy going back to the village. Mm. <laughs> that is the problem we are having. It has to do with our culture. It has to do with our constitution. Mm. Because in our constitution, it was explicitly stated, state of origin. Mm. You were born in Lagos. Mm. Your father was born in Lagos. in Lagos. Your grandfather was born in Lagos. Mm. You are still a foreigner in that Lagos. Yeah. You were born yeah. in the north, brought up in the north. Hmm. A son that was born in your presence will grow up and call you a foreigner. Hmm. So you don't play people at times, but we need to have a kind of a kind of restructuring of mindset. <laughs> we need to sit down with ourselves, look at ourselves very well and make a path that is positive for ourselves. Right. That is what you see in Nigeria. Absolutely. Mm. Look, you cannot go to a village and be in a hotel. It's a call right. Just build a modest house. Don't reflect labor in your village. Don't reflect London in your yes. village. Mm. Don't reflect Abuja in your village. Mm. Good morning. Thank you, Hassan. So there are two types of empty houses in our villages. Mm. One, the one that Yikira <coughs> is talking about, which is you build a house, you go there once a year. But there's one that she raised, which is really critical, where our fathers built this house. We've moved to the city. The house is there. 
empty. No so problem. our father comes to Lagos to live with us, for example. He goes sick, maybe he's 98 years old. He dies. He asks me, take me back home. And you bury him there, and that's it. And after you bury grandpa, because your own fail. children are already planning to go to the US. abroad, mm -hmm. to Canada. You already, you live in the city. So daddy's house is there. Nobody's going there. Dilapidated. He's there, empty. So you drive through the states, the various states, the villages, and you see empty houses. All you see is somebody's grave there, 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 there burial ground there, and that's it. So what's the reason? That's what Hassan is saying. Mm. We need a, 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 a reworking of our mind, and even our constitution. And constitution, yeah. Because some, I mean, one government will just come one day and say, okay, all these houses, build them down because we want to build the road. Can they, can they do that? We don't understand moving dead bodies. Because many of these houses across these major roads have somebody's dead body there. Mm. Mm. So do we now exhume mm -hmm. the bodies, take mm -hmm. them to a government cemetery, so we can open, uh, break down these houses to roads. build a road for so the people to use? So have to, they have to exhume, they do exhume yeah. um, bodies. But um, what I know, being a person who learns her culture and language in Lagos, I knew how important it was for my parents that we do not lose, lose touch with our, our lineage or our um, roots in the in, in, uh, EBA where I'm from. And the way they struggled to pass it down. My grandfather built a house in history that he brought his brothers to live in. Today, the whole house, none of his grandchildren or his own children directly live in that house anymore. Mm. They've all left it. They've all progressed yes. into but some things. progress in other areas of the village. Some progressed outside, outside. the village. Mm. And for my own generation, grandpa try. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested. I cannot go to village and go and be speaking English with a first cousin or a second exactly. cousin mm. about whose father beat yes. what. I, I really can't be bothered. Absolutely. So, mm. I so think what do we do to ensure it's properly passed down? Because even I mean, there's nothing you're passing down. Mm. Ah. Let's not. Do, so, okay, so I, I don't so, want to go to religion. Should we say you this. own it? And when I die, that's it. Yes. Yes. So, so that, that mentality then, sorry, may I am not vexed. That mentality then removes this corrupt mentality that our Ayuromi call Letoshimo mentality. So some politicians have that mentality, and that's why they will build and take and take and take and build things they really don't need. Which one do you need exactly? It's only where you stay. And when you die, only where you be buried. I'll come to you, um, Fashola, I believe. Good morning, Fashola. Oh, I'm so sorry no, I kept you with you. Go ahead, Mariam. <clears throat> yes. You know, the building of house in the village can also happen to you today, mm -hmm. which is you built your house here in Nigeria and your yeah. children will grow up mm -hmm. and live somewhere else and this your house will become the village house that they can come back to. Mm -hmm. So I agree with Hassan where he says build something modest and build for yourself. Don't build for generations to come because everybody's going to come here and stay here and live here. Do you understand? Because it likely may not happen. And we can say that confidently because it has, it's been shown that it doesn't happen. But there are families that are able to sustain that. And I don't know what they do. I would like to find out what they do. That no matter where the family is, a certain period, you know, certain periods of the year, they all come back. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and you're able to look at pictures of, oh, your great-grandfather. They are able to do that, but they are very few. The way life is, people are just constantly moving away and, you yeah. know, um, finding, new, yes. her, finding new places. So I think, as I said before, our legacy should be less on the Mate the houses that we build for ourselves and more mm -hmm. things that we can build for communities, things that will leave us and serve communities long after you're gone. And that's why I think we should but see, do that. I, I, that. That example you gave where mm. people come home from all over the world. Yes, yes, it happens when you have like a matriarch <coughs> or a patriarch still alive. Mm. Once that person passes on, the link, so, that yeah. link, that, that, that's what brings you home. That's so that person, there are very few families, yes. even after the original matriarch or patriarch yes. passes, yes. they still are able to do it. That's why I said mm. it will be interesting. It will be very so good to be able mm. to find out okay, what they're doing Let me take this call from Judy. are you there? Yeah, good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Okay, Chidi is my name. Yes. I'm calling Chidi. from Abuja. Yes, go ahead, Chidi. Yeah. I just want to say something about your, the topic you're discussing. Yes. Of discussion. You know, the issue of building house in the village is a function of how much you have. You know, it, if you have um, if you have money enough, you can build your taste, whatever you want, anywhere, whether in Abuja or in Lagos. You know, your house reflects who you are. You know, and let me come correct this impression about uh, roads in the southeast. It's not true that everywhere in the southeast the roads are bad. It's not true. So many villages in the southeast have very good roads. You can confirm yourself, but there are some major roads to the southeast that doesn't have 
very good one. That is what people usually make reference to. That yeah. is not correct. You can build a house based on how much you have. If you, even if you build a small house in the building, it is still going to be like a big one. Yeah. So that is it. You cannot come to your village and begin to stay in a hotel. I mean, that is your place for God's sake. If people don't build houses in their village, how will those places develop? So the village should be left like, it should be left fallow. You know, like uh, somebody called Elia Hassan. You know, there is, we have a state of origin in this country. People always make reference to where they come from. And you cannot go to your home and go and stay in the village. So if you don't build in your place, me, you don't really have the money. Like, Chidi, like Chidi, let, you me Chidi, let me stay with you for a second. You cannot build. Chidi, let me stay with you for a second. Let me stay with you. Chidi, can you hear me? Hello, Chidi. Chidi. So why, why go and build, why build small things? Chidi, can you hear me? Chidi, can you hear me? Yes, Hello? Hey. yes, I want to I want to engage you. So I, and I like I like your perspective and I'd like to learn from Hello? you. I like your perspective and I'd like to learn from you. So the, the, the conversation started when people say that you build a house in the village and you abandon it for a whole year and don't come until next year, December. The point is, is does that make sense? Or rather build complexes or maybe apartments where People in the community can live in. So even if it's just one, two bedroom you have for yourself, at least the, you're helping the community. It's better than you oh. building this big edifice that only you and your family come in once a year. That was the way the conversation started from. Do you agree with that? Hello? You didn't hear Hello? Me. All right, Chidi, I have to... Uh, so yeah, let's... May I quickly yeah, say that? Okay, so for instance, me now, we've had a family house in Asaba for as long as I can remember. I grew up in that house. And right now, the only link tying me to Asaba is my father. Mm. That's the only... If I say I'm going to Asaba now, it's because I want to see him. Or my, my grandmother is dead. Mm. Or my relatives, like, everybody's yeah. scattered all over. Right. It's just him. So if anything happens and he goes, I have no business in Asaba. I have no business in that. Where, who, who, where do I want to go to? And it's not like I want to be running houses all over the country. That's mm. not. See, the world is <laughs> so global stable. now that I can stay in a hotel room and run my life if I can afford it. So let's. I, I think it's a bit. Now where everybody's talking about the roots, but if we really want um, our country to go ahead, I think we need to start taking away that state of, uh, you are a Nigerian first of all, and that means that you can stay anywhere and build your family from anywhere that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Let's not make it seem like some people are foolish for not wanting to go back to the village. So what do I want to do now? Go back to that house that probably they would have sold after he goes, or I'll now go and get a land and start building because I want to be going there once in a year, once in two years. How am I supposed to start that But would it be nice oh, for you to have a house where you go there and your kids, as they're growing up, they know that they have a home in Asaba, that you are not, this is, we yes, we live here. Now. Yeah, this is a good tool. Okay. Just, in case, just in case grandpa passes on now, Okay. Right? And then your kids are growing up. And every year, you make it a point. Like, I want my, my children to know where I'm from. Okay. So your dad used to say, this is your my room. This is your grandpa's room. This is where you used to stay. it when we are back after the okay, holidays. So, so, so that's probably the, that's the rationale. Yeah. Yeah. Who maintains Who maintain so, the house? So what I've seen <clears throat> and read is you build a... People will say moderately, but you build it with the community in mind. So the community mm. in mind is um, they are working in the house. Do you have, maybe, are you Aunties, so rich, cousins. you have horses, so there are community people taking care of the stables and things like that. So it's constantly being taken care of even when you're not there. So it has to be a functioning um, building. It yeah. cannot just mm. be a building to come and stay only during the holidays. Yeah. It has to also pay the people around you somehow. Your relatives you will it. love you, but nobody really, after a while, wants to keep doing things for free. And right. what I've also seen is that Sometimes it's the cousins that take over these places. Yeah, exactly. your father has built a house, yeah. and then the twenty years down the line, they don't start yeah. a family. Something <coughs> happened. Actually, was, they will tell, tell you your history to you. They will tell you that. Let me take this call from Bucci. <laughs> Bucci, good morning. Are you there? Hello, Bucci. There it is. You're live. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. So I really enjoyed the topic you guys uh, brought up this morning. So for me. I've currently reflected on this topic for a while and I've engaged some colleagues and friends mm -hmm. on what they think regarding this. So for me, I don't think personally, <laughs> let me speak for myself personally, I think God has blessed me well to be able to build any type of house I want in that village. But currently, I don't feel like doing a big house. I don't even know if I want to build a small house. So I'm currently in my early 40s and I have three kids. But now, reflecting on who I am, my family, my parents, they stayed a bit in the village, but they are no longer there. They, in fact, they left the village very early. My father lived most of his life in Lagos and Port Harcourt. Same with my mom. 
as I speak, I don't have a grandfather, grandmother, no mother in the village. So what am I going to the village to erect a big building? I have the means if I want, I can erect any type of house. I can't. But looking at my children, I know that these children, I look at them, I think of them. I know that in the near future, very likely, very likely, they may not even be in Nigeria. They may decide to leave. But even if they stay in Nigeria, well, they, they will not be in the village more than I am. So mm -hmm. if I think of myself, I can't think of two or three more times that my father took me to the village. Mm -hmm. So why am I going to erect a palatial house, even though I have the means? Mm -hmm. Again, some people say, ah, where will you bury your mother? Where will you bury your father? That's mm -hmm. not an issue. I have a big compound. Mm -hmm. I can turn it to a garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, like okay, yes. Building of big houses in the village or building a house that you think would keep your your own family history alive is one person's vision. And that's mm. where the problem is here. It's, one person's vision. it's usually one person's vision. So my grandfather was born, bred, grew, and died in the same place. He deserved a palatial house there. Mm. But my father moved for economic reasons somewhere else. He had needed to live in comfort where he yeah. lived. And so he built a house in Lagos. So why will I now leave the comfort that I, and where I work and go and build the house to make statements mm. for someone in the village? The missing <laughs> line is that you don't have cousins who don't have that vision, mm -mm. Wow. who don't even send your vision at all. At all. Come up and retell your history to your children. Mm. Mm. We have a house now where, I, in fact, I'm tired of the stories from that house. It's the same thing with my grandfather's house, where things are going wrong. They're not calling you that you're not living there. People living there are saying, I cannot maintain broken pipeline. I cannot maintain leaky roof. I, I cannot do them. that. That's, that's the reality mm. of having those houses yeah. over generations. The first generation after you might try. Mm. The, the next, second, next the one, struggle. they are far distracted. The third one, they're not going to even send yeah. eventually. Yeah. Mm. So people should start to rethink the need for these things. Maybe if you want to leave your lineage, tell stories to your children. Mm. Let them know how. If my grandmother should die now, finish. The story don't Tell end. Tell us, don't end. <laughs> you know, Let me take this call from Ade. Ade, are you coming from London? Thanks for calling. Yeah, good, good morning to you, ladies. Good morning, you're live. My, my point is that this thing is personal. Mm, if personal. your family or your great-grandfather, everybody has come from Lagos, you can build us in Lagos. Mm. If they come from Kano, you can build us in Kano. But when it comes to... Other part of the southern, it depends on which, how is your town, how is the village to your family. Mm. Maybe in, in that village, if you build your house, before you finish it, they kill you. Ah. And you have the history of this in that village. And now you are successful, you are in America, and you are not planning to go to the same village and build a house. Then you are on your own. Mm. And 75% mm. of children we are having today, most especially in diaspora, if they visit Nigeria at all, they will go to Abuja or Lagos. You have no time to go to any village. Mm. So what's the essence of going to the village? Mm. If you want to help your village, mm. look for what they want. Maybe it's school or health center mm. or borehole. Do something for them and yeah. get out from the place. They have no support. Thank you very you much. Know I I scream there. You know why I screamed? Because I was, I was preparing to go there. So we've had some villages that um, for every time you get there, there's always... I don't want to go negative testing energy. out now. Negative There's energy. always a negative energy and probably you've gone to visit and you're coming back and all your children are sick or something happens on the road. And it seems like, okay, these are the ones that went to the cities to go and make money. Now they have come and we will pepper them, we will show them. And you're not very, it no, feels like you're not again. received in that sort of village. Would you mm -hmm. advise that sort of person to go and build a house there? You are hiding yourself in the city. Nobody knows whether you drink Gary or not. They just once in a while stumble on pictures. And then you now go to the village and expose sure. yourself that you have money. You want to build this sort of house. And you're not able to live to even enjoy the house. So people have different reasons why mm. they stay away from the villages. And I don't think anybody should judge them yeah. based on that. Exactly. If you're comfortable being a Nigerian, I mean, see, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a global citizen. Mm. If it doesn't work like this, I will go somewhere else yeah. and I will survive. I don't necessarily have to go to the village. I know my history. I know my roots. I'm going to try as much as possible. Like one of the things I wanted to do to yeah. try and sustain my story so that we don't leave it because yeah. I came from a very peculiar village in Asaba, Umojife, is to get my father to tell a story. So I'm putting it in a book mm. that my children can read and yeah. remember. I don't have to Every be American is, a, is, is not from America. I mean, exactly. They all came yeah. from Europe. So <coughs> they didn't have to go and sell their bikes. Okay, their are forefathers set, didn't have to go and build. Yeah. Okay, well, your roots, Irish roots Nigeria or German roots. The reason why, one of the reasons why we can build big houses and just lock them up, we don't pay tax on the Yeah, abroad. 
build. They are you paying a lot home. of time. You can't just build and just leave it as so abandoned. What, what has happened now, they now open their houses as, mm. um, you know, um, tourist centers yes. for people to go and yes. visit. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it so has to make money to keep a building just laying for that point there. Let me take this call, Lafolabi from Kotonu. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I follow you from Kutunu. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. This thank topic we are discussing is a very important one for every man, equally for every Nigerian woman. Yeah. You see, I subscribe to the point that it's not a bad thing for you to build a house in your village. It's a good idea because of tomorrow. You know, we all talk about plan B or no plan B. Mm. You don't know what happens later. That place is good in the village. A B was to rescue you at the end of the day. Maybe the only thing you come back to me after you have retired or if anything happens. Remember what happened to our people after the experience of the civil war in Nigeria, where you have to go back to your roots. If anything happens now, if chicken comes to roast, you have no place to call your place than your village. That's where you feel safest. And you go back if you have a place here. It's a shame for every African man not to have a place of abode. We are in that is in a place where he calls his origin. If something brings you to your village, for example, I'm not even in Nigeria, I don't talk about being in the village. But I have a place in my village. If something should bring me home, I have a place to put my head. It's all honorable for you to go and look for a hotel. Or if somebody in front of mine has to come with me, or I have to find myself in my place, I'll not be a stranger in a place where I was yeah. If your father Mr. And Mr. Your Malabi, mother, Mr. Malabi, Mr. Malabi, thank you, Mr. Malabi. Malabi. You know, my, my father took me to my village as a child, you know. He, was, he, he took us down to Tokumba Street you know, on, the, on the island. Mm. And I saw that how my own village has become a city. So what Such that, do? so what do I do? <laughs> I have, so they have every boy, because well, he told me how, but but well, may I, for, was my father's place of birth. Your father, for loving saying, is how can you go to the place you are born and be using left hand to point to your father's house? You know, there's, no there's a cultural but mentality also, to it. In Luto, in Luto, in BSC, you are now using left hand. Of course, mm. yeah, what is that? Also, so, Mr. No, no. Falabi has just, for me, opened to us no, the no. reason why people, people build, build the houses. Right. Mm -hmm. So here we are thinking, oh, it's foolishness. But there's a reason. People come from it. There was history that happened where mm. people were asked to go back home. Mm. Yeah. So for that sort of person who has gone through that experience, yes. there has to be a plan B. And plan B is find a place in your house with your people where people yes. know you and know your roots. Yeah. But I think life has changed. That's a lot it. of things have happened That's since it. then. So life has evolved. We too will evolve in our investments and in where we um, put roots eventually. Like, um, like I said before, some of the houses that we're living in now, building and beautifying, in a few years on our children's growth, they will call these houses the village oh, houses yes. and they don't come so to don't outdated. Come to yeah. So sometimes you go back to that village mm -hmm. and the house has been taken over. What then happens? No, we have to leave no government, government, government or family members. Mm -hmm. They've taken it over. They've taken it yeah, over. Yeah. They, they don't have a space you. for you. So what do you have? What happens? You leave them. Life happens to yeah. everybody. Yeah, so away. sometimes that plan B you think you are sure enough so that if anything Agree. happens here and I go back, you go back, you don't you have to go and rent somewhere in that your same village after you built a house and you'll be telling us the story of uh, see how my family members chased me out of this <laughs> so and you know that those people in the village you cannot fight house fights and land fights empty handed. Mm. They are ready for you. So you that have been in the city all your life, you just quietly go and hide somewhere and start, start your life all over again. Right. So let's not assume that you keep a house there. When you come back, you meet that house. Uh, Anything can happen. Fantastic. Mm. I think we can end on that. Huh. Okay. Are we good? <laughs> yeah. You take Facebook messages. Yeah, let's okay. take you. Yeah. Right, I have one more minute, please. Hurry she up. says, okay. Igbo guys will build a mansion and lock the gate so nobody will put juju inside when they are not there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adebayo says you can't work so hard and decide to spend those hard-earned money to build where you will only generate more controversy when you mm. die. If Thank there's you. need for you, visit and tell your kids stories mm. and let them see things visually. Mm. Yeah, if I can, says we are from Ibusa but stay in Asaba. My father used all his pension money to build a big house in the village that nobody stays in. Mm. I begged him to build a commercial house in Asaba. A flat in Asaba today is 800000 He was whining. I don't know if he's right. Mm. Like, okay. Olajidi says, I don't even know my grandfather personally. I don't even know the names of my great-grandparents. Mm. Four or five generations down the line, many no, people good. would have been forgotten to have ever lived. Mm. So that's okay, bad. that's all we can take. But I would, I would like to end with, we need to do better you, take, you take my grandfather's um, way. My, my grandfather was very smart. In 1976, he died. And as I said, 
till my mother died, she was still collecting inheritance. So mm -hmm. she doesn't want to know where the father's house. Doesn't want to know just be everybody every month, every every quarter. She gets something. The that was a wise man back in 1976. The thing is, is, is you are the second generation or third after him. Yeah. Were you be able to collect inheritance? I don't even want to know. But no, at least she collected. But the point is that so, he was so, so smart and he's so, so if you are building a house of your if your father is gonna be there, let him plan. What I'm just saying, but he planned it's it. God that so father lineage. planned. God Almighty sustains lineage. Mm. No matter what you do, pray that your lineage is sustained. Not any efforts that you do will sustain it, but the will of God. Mm. Okay. Will of God. Somebody gave me an advice here. Say BCR so that's not a village. So you can build and rent. During civil war, people needed homes. Just build and rent. Your village is your state capital. Okay. Okay. I'll consider that. That is all we can take on the show today. Have a fabulous weekend. weekend. See you Monday. Looking Bye for forward now. to this weekend.